Next on Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. You've got to make that decision. God, I'm the distribution center you're looking for. I'm the guy, I'm the gal that you want. You want to get seed out on the planet? You just get it to me. I promise you, I will sow it where you tell me, when you tell me, and how much you tell me. I will obey you. I am your channel. I am your distribution center. Welcome to Winning with Wisdom, the anointed teaching ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, stricken with an incurable disease and then miraculously healed by the power of God. The powerful ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui is equipping God's people with wisdom principles to be successful in every area of life, marriage, family, business, and more, touching the world, touching lives, touching you. This is Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui my pleasure to join you today in Winning with Wisdom. Uh, this is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. We are a teaching and an evangelistic ministry bringing the Word of God around the world. Lives are being saved, healed, delivered, and set free. We're getting some incredible praise reports. Let me read one for you right now. This is A.H. from Seville, Tennessee, writes that uh, she got so excited about our teaching, sowed a seed to the ministry of $100, and re almost immediately, uh, within a few days, got a check of $11,108 uh, $11 that came in out of the blue. Uh, it was a, uh, from their attorneys uh, cleaning out an old file and discovered money that was owed to them. It's amazing when you get fed the word, you sow where you're fed, God will get harvest to you from many different areas you never even dreamed of. I trust that you'll be blessed as we share the Word of God together today. And if you have a praise report, let me know. Call our prayer line. Uh, send it to me today so we can rejoice with you. Or if you have a need, we want to pray with you as well. Today, I'm going to continue my teaching from the series, The Harvest Twins, Faith and Seed. The Bible tells the story of how God asked Abraham to give his son Isaac as an offering. Now, Isaac was very special to Abraham, but Abraham sowed the seed of his son. He obeyed God. He had faith in God. And we know, of course, that's what God wanted all along. Not the seed, but the faithful obedience. So God promises that Abraham Abraham would be the father of many nations was fulfilled through the power hidden in the seed, which was his son Isaac, and the faith that Abraham had in God. So we see the seed and faith, twin pillars of reaping a harvest, work together to fulfill the destiny that God has planned for you. As you listen to the Word of God, believe God, and obey Him for the right seed, it'll happen in your life. Right now, let's head into the sanctuary of World Harvest Church in Columbus, Ohio, uh, for today's message, The Harvest Twins, Faith and Seed, and then I'll be right back to pray for you. And now, today's vital teaching from Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. You have been creating already. You just didn't know it. You're creating every day your environment. Let me show you one, one thing you already created. We were all on the road to destruction. We were all on the road to the hell and the grave. And one day, one day, the Word was near you. What was that? The Word of faith that we preach. What was that word of faith? That if you will believe in your heart, uh, speak with your mouth, uh, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. Well, what happened? That word was conceived here in the mind, and when it was conceived, it was then believed in the heart, in the spirit, and when it was believed, it was then released by your mouth, and once it was spoken, then it was received. What does that mean? The Word is near you. What is that? The Word of faith that we preach. If we'll believe in our hearts, speak with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, we shall be saved. You heard it, you conceived it, you believed it, you spoke it, and guess what? You received it, and instead of going to hell and the grave, you turned and you changed your destination, and you're on your way to eternal life. Hallelujah! How do I create exactly the same way? You want to create your health? Get in the Word. And when you get in the Word, the Word will be near you. And what will happen with the Word? You will conceive it. When you conceive it, you will believe it. When you believe it, you will speak it. When you speak it, you're about to receive it. Hallelujah! That's how you create your financial future. You've got to hear the Word. You've got to uh, uh, first conceive it. Then you've got to believe it. Once you believe it, you've got to speak it. Once you speak it, 
you're going to receive it. Are you getting the Holy Ghost? So you've been creating already. That's how you start to create your environment. That's why he gave him the word. And then how do you create your, how many of you are believing for a financial breakthrough? All right, go to Genesis 129. Genesis 129. In fact, go to Genesis 111. In Genesis 111, the Bible says, God's commanded the earth to bring harvest. God has never taken that command back. The earth has to bring harvest. Everybody say harvest. harvest. Now, the only time, everybody look up here. The only time the earth does not have to bring harvest is if seed doesn't touch it. But the moment seed touches the earth, harvest has to come. It's been commanded. I don't care if you're Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, I don't care what you are, the moment seed hits the ground, harvest got to come. Because God has never taken the command back. So now, for Adam to create his financial future, what happened? Look at Genesis 129. Adam was given seed. Everybody say seed. seed. He said, I've given you every plant yielding seed, uh -huh, whose fruit is in itself. Underline the word fruit. You shall have them for food. Underline the word food. So we know now that Adam was given seed, and out of that seed will come fruit, and the fruit will be the food. Uh -huh. Everybody look up here. Your seed is not your provision. The seed contains your provision. The seed is how you create your provision. Seed will bring fruit. Fruit is your food. How many of you are glad Adam didn't need all the seed? Are you getting a hold of this? Why? Because he is not a creation. He is a what? Creation. Now you understand. When God gives you seed, oh, my brothers and sisters, when God gives you seed, he's trying to teach you to create. Brother John, come up here for a second. I'm going to show you something. Stand right here. How many of you believe in God for a better car? Lift up your hand nice and high. All right. Now watch this. You prayed and asked God for a car, and God gave it to you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here's the problem. You don't recognize it. Watch this. Here's your car, right there. But that don't look like no car. I don't see no wheels. I don't see no engine. That's just some money. In fact, that money can't even buy me the car. That's right. When God answered your prayer for a car, he always answers it in seed form. Good. How many of you believe believing for a better house? Well, guess what? God already answered your prayer. Where is your house? Right there. In your hand. That don't look like no house. I know. I know. That just looks like a little bit of money, and that money can't even buy the house. You don't understand. The money wasn't supposed to buy the house. The money was the seed that contained the house. You got your car. You got your house. You got the stuff you're praying for. You don't recognize it. Why? It's still in seed form. Are you getting a hold of this? And the problem is this. You may be eating your car right now. I hope it tastes good. <laughs> you weren't supposed to eat the car. You were supposed to sow the seed that will bring the car. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother. God always answers it in seed form. Are you getting a hold of this? Go to 2 Corinthians 9.10. 2 Corinthians 9.10. What did he give the first man for his financial future? Seed. What did he give Noah for his financial future? Seed. What's he going to give you to fulfill all your needs? Seed. How do you access all things? Provision, harvest, abundance, car, house, money to get out of debt, business, uh, money to fulfill the plan of God for your life. How will you get all things? You access everything by something called... Uh, Oh, are you getting a hold of this? 2 Corinthians 9.10. 2 Corinthians 9.10. Are you there? Say amen. amen. God provides what? Seed to who? 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Everybody look up here. God ain't in the car business. God ain't in the furniture business. God in the seed business. So, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a statement. And remember this for the rest of your Christian life on planet Earth. Stop praying for things. Start praying for seed. Here's the statement. Pray for seed. Everybody say, pray for seed. Pray for seed. Seed for things. Seed for things. Let me say that one more time. Everybody say, pray for seed. Pray for seed. seed for things. You're getting a hold of this. God don't give things. He gives what? Seed. Now, does he give seed to everybody? No, no. no. God's selective. He only gives seed to the? Huh. Now, now, how many of you are God's sowers? I want, I want to see your faces. How many of you are God's sowers in the house? Now, listen, 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 listen. God sees your spirit, your heart, before he sees your flesh because God is a spirit. So what does that mean? He knows if you're telling the truth. Come on. The Bible says you sow as you purpose in your heart. Well, until you purpose to be a sower, God will not call you one. And as long as he don't call you one, he ain't obligated to give you any seed because God don't give seed to every Christian. He only gives seed to the... So you've got a purpose in your heart. God, I promise you this. If you get seed to me, you can get seed through me. You've got to make that decision. God, I'm the distribution center you're looking for. I'm the guy, I'm the gal that you want. You want to get seed out on the planet? You just get it to me. I promise you, I will sow it where you tell me, when you tell me, and how much you tell me. I will obey you. I am your channel. I am your distribution center. I purpose in my heart that I will be your soul. See, when you make that kind of a commitment to God, that's when God says, I'm going to get seed to him. I'm going to get seed to him. Remember, you are not the seed provider. God is the seed provider. He says, God will provide the seed to the so, so you are not the seed provider, you are the sower. And until you get that revelation that the God, whatever you get to me, I will do with it whatever you tell me, then God says, I have found me a sower. I can trust them. I will, oh, Lord, I'll tell them. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, God is not, is not. stupid. Stupid. What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean God is not stupid? It means this, God will test you. Oh, no, no, not with cancer, not with sickness, not with poverty, but he will test you with one word, obedience. I always tell people, favor is unfair. It don't go to everybody. It only goes to the seed of obedience. It only goes to those who obey God <laughs> and so as God tells them. Are you getting a hold of this? Uh -huh. God will check out your faithfulness. Are you faithful when you have little? Then he will trust you with much. Are you a faithful sower when you have little? Then he will trust you with much. Are you getting hold of this? He's going to check you out. Are you going to give the hundred dollars when he tells you? Because if you ain't going to give no hundred when he tells you, you ain't going to give no million when he tells you. So don't tell me you're a sower. Tell God you're a sower. Because he is the seed provider. Are you getting a hold of this? He don't give seed to everybody. He only gives seed to the? Now, now, why? See, harvest has never followed a need. Harvest only follows the seed. You got to get a hold of this. Now, who does he give seed to? T listen, listen. Mm, Lord, I'll tell him. 
our ministry was struggling. I, I, and I know many of you have been struggling financially. We went through the same thing. And I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to all the camp meetings. I'm going all to all the, uh, uh, the conferences. I, every time that bucket goes by, I, I'm putting something in that bucket. And you know what? I'm still struggling. How many of you ask God that question? Me too. I said, why? Why? Why is this guy doing well? This ministry doing great. That church doing good. That, you know, that minister doing great. I, I, I'm doing the same thing. I ain't getting it. And I'll never forget what the Lord said. He said, son, I'm not obligated to give you a harvest of what you threw in the bucket. He says, I'm obligated to give you a harvest when you obey my voice. <laughs> See, how can you tell me you're one of God's sowers when you don't obey him at seed time? How can you, well, well, well I, I think I'm going to throw $2 in the bucket. Well, that's okay, but is that what God said? Oh, I don't know what God said. That's just what I'm going to do. So immediately God looks at that person and says, huh, so they're going to do their thing. They're not going to do my thing. So the next time he's got a bag of seed, he passes by that person because he says they're busy doing their thing. And then the Lord said to me these words. He says, the seed that I direct is the only harvest I'm obligated to bring. Are you telling me, Brother Nasser, that every time it's time for an offering, I got to pray? Yes. Every time it's time for an offering, I got to obey? Yes. God does not watch over your word to perform it. He watches over... And my brothers and sisters, herein lies the first problem in the prosperity message. We've been learning the principles, but we've not been learning how to hear his voice. Emphasize the prosperity message because they said it ain't working in my life. Well, sure it is working. You know, you didn't obey God, so how are you going to see a harvest? See, the God will never get involved in your harvest if he cannot get involved in your seed. Are you getting a hold of this? See, see, so sowers are ones who obey God. Everybody say, obey God. Amen. So every time it's offering time, you better pray. You better ask God what to do. Why? Because everything you need is hidden in a seed. Are you getting a hold of this? And so if God wants to meet your needs, he's going to give you some? Seed. Amen. That's why it's so critical that you obey. In 2 Chronicles 6, 4, go to 2 Chronicles 6, 4. I want you to see this in your Bible. See, when you obey God, you cannot fail. You absolutely cannot fail. Second Chronicles 6, 4. Have you found it? Say amen. amen. Look at this. Second Chronicles 6, 4. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has fulfilled with his hands what he spoke with his mouth. Now, everybody look up here. God is not obligated to fulfill what you speak. He only fulfills with his hands what he speaks with his mouth. So every time, it's offering time, wherever you are, you better pray and obey. Everybody say, pray, pray. And, obey. and obey. Why? Because God fulfills with his hands what he speaks with his mouth. Go, go to another scripture, Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. I want you to see this in your Bible. Job 36, 11. Did you notice the, the word in Job 36, 11 is the word if. If is a conditional word. What does that word if mean? It means this. Uh, it means if you don't do your part, God isn't obligated to do his part. Covenant literally means a contract between two people. You do your part, God will do his part. If they will uh, serve and obey. Everybody say obey. obey. If they will obey God, they will spend their days in what? Now, everybody look up here. How many of you want to spend your days in prosperity? Well, did you notice the key word was obeying God? Not doing your thing, but obeying God. And when they obey God, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Are you getting a hold of this? The key word was obedience. But what if they do not obey God? Read the next verse. See, every time you throw something in a bucket, because that's what you think you ought to do, instead of waiting on God or asking God what to do, look at what the next verse says. If 
they obey not, they will perish by the sword. What does that mean? They will die for lack of... Are you getting a hold of this? my brothers and sisters, and for years we've thrown in the bucket what we want to and got mad at God because there's no harvest. God don't watch over your word. He watches over. You know, in Deuteronomy, don't go over there, but in Deuteronomy it says, if they will hearken to the voice of the Lord their God uh, and obey to do what God tells them, His commandments, then blessings will come upon them and overtake them. Uh -huh. What does that mean? They'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in their bank account, blessed. How many of you want to be blessed coming and going? Yeah. But what was the key? If they will hearken to the voice of the Lord their God. So if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, don't read the rest. It wasn't for every Christian. It was for those that will listen and obey God. Are you getting a hold of this? Everybody say, where he leads, where he, leads. He, feeds. he feeds. Where he guides, where he, guides. He, provides. he provides. Oh, Lord, you want me to tell him that? All right, how many of you can handle something heavy? All right, all right here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. We have struggled financially in our lives, and we blame the devil. But there was not one attack that the devil planned for your life or your finances that God didn't know about. And he already made a way out. The problem is we miss the way out. Why? Months before the financial attack came into your life, you were in a service like this. And they were about to take an offering. And guess what? <laughs> you ended up with two figures in your head. And you decided to go with the little one. But the big one was God trying to tell you that the financial attack was coming and the difference between the little figure and the big figure was God working out your deliverance through the financial attack. Because the financial attack was not a shock to God. Are you getting a hold of this? We're learning that the harvest you never see is the seed you never sowed. Your circumstances never determine your harvest. Your seed does. But a seed sown in obedience together with faith will reap a tremendous harvest. When you attach faith to your seed, faith is for God, seed is for you. That's what doesn't leave planet Earth, comes back into your life as a harvest. God breathes on your seed because of your faith, and then that harvest comes into your life. There's so much more to this message, I simply don't have time to show you. That's why I encourage you to pick up the phone, visit our website, write to me, get all the teaching, The Harvest Twins, Faith and Seed. It's a six CD set available for a love gift of $30 or more in this series. I'll give you in-depth teaching teaching on areas like seed sown that are an act of faith. Faith is the nutrient of the seed. Praise changes the atmosphere and much more. Here's my announcer to tell you more how to receive this series. Seed alone cannot accomplish anything. There has to be faith attached to the seed for God to release a bountiful harvest. Your faith causes God to move and turn your seed into your harvest. The Harvest Twins, Faith and Seed, Dr. Nasser Siddiqui's powerful new life-changing teaching is available for you today on six CDs for your ministry gift of $30 or more. Call toll-free 1-888-947-3660. Write to Wisdom Ministries, Box 4700, Tulsa, Oklahoma, or click on wisdomministries.org to request this vital teaching. With every order, you'll also receive your free copy of Dr. Nasser and Anita Siddiqui's Wisdom Magazine Miracles Edition to build your faith for your miracle harvest. The Harvest Twins, Faith and Seed. Order today. If you want to be a farmer, you don't just walk out and reap your harvest. You have to take the right steps. You have to know how to sow. You have to have the right knowledge. I encourage you to equip yourself with the knowledge so that you can reap a harvest in your life. Maybe it's a harvest of finances. Maybe it's a job, a situation or a relationship. 
Order this six CD series on the Harvest Twins Faith and Seed uh, and get ready for the harvest waiting for you. Also, when you sow a gift into Wisdom Ministries, you are helping us preach and teach the gospel all over the world. And the Bible says that as you bless others, you will be blessed. Give and it shall be given back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men pour into your bosom. You know, sow your best ministry gift today and become a covenant partner. Become a partner with us together we reach the world for Jesus Christ. You know, the harvest never follows a need, it follows the seed. What is the need in your life? Pray, ask God, and then release your faith. God wants to do something awesome in your life. Sow your seed. God is a miracle working God, and I want to give you a free gift. I want to sow something into your life, which is our magazine of miracles He's doing today. In my Wisdom magazine, it's available to you free when you call or visit online. I know it'll be a great blessing to you as you read the healing testimonies of myself, my family, and so much more. God will bless you abundantly as you get a hold of this free magazine and order the CD series to teach you how to get your harvest. Now, don't forget to join me June the 2nd, 1st and 2nd at the Wisdom Center right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'll be hosting my Wisdom Weekend and sharing godly insights that I know will impact your life. Visit our website to find out more on how you can be part of this life changing weekend and also join me uh, at a meeting close to your home. I said I was going to pray and I am going to pray. Let's come into agreement now. I thank you, Father. The Bible says we're to agree touching is done by our Father in heaven. I release my faith with those uh, that are calling in, sowing their seed, releasing their faith for what you want to do in their lives. The Bible says that when we agree in faith, we come into faith right now, believing we receive. Every need is met in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's been wonderful for you to join me today. Tell a friend about this uh, teaching, Winning with Wisdom, and join me next week as we continue our series, Winning with Wisdom, The Harvest Twins. This is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui saying, I will see you next time. Join us again next time and tell a friend to watch Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, Tulsa, Oklahoma.